Hey everyone, Happy New Year! Uh, before we start, I just wanted to say a, a really big thank you to everyone who's been sharing these videos recently. It's a really small channel, so everything you do, liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing on social media, they all help our reach. So thank you so much to all of you. So what has to be said today? Today we're talking about power. But unlike in any of my previous videos, we're going to talk about how power affects the individual. Now, power means various things, so in this case we're talking about political power, which means the ability to influence and affect the state and civil society. Since the state operates purely by force, Political power could be the ability to use violence and force people and avoid responsibility for it. It also includes the ability to enrich oneself at others' expense. Political power is always used to appropriate wealth and live off others. For the purposes of this video, power means the individual power a person can amass. The desire for power seems to come from our need to feel safe. Powerful people can build fortresses and surround themselves with guards, along with having better food and medical care than anybody else. It's pretty paradoxical, though, because the more powerful someone is, the more likely others are going to want to kill or depose them. As a result, power is a constant negotiation with anyone who might want it, including the entire citizenry. Which is one reason why people with power occasionally purge their parties and send regime insiders to the chopping block. Power is also about our natural aversion to boring work, as people with power and money live off the labor of others. The really clever people set up a social order that legitimizes everything they do, like capitalism, which celebrates and empowers the wealthy, rather than recognizing them as parasites. A variety of people feel the urge for power, from full-blown sociopaths to well-meaning activists. Some just want to crush their enemies. Others want to create a better world. Since either of those groups would have access to the same state powers, it doesn't really matter so much what your intentions are. You're still going to use taxes, the law, police violence, and prisons to solve the problem. When we take all that into account, it's easy to understand Lord Acton's dictum You've heard it before that power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. If you're using violence against people, or if the threat of violence backs up all your words and actions, if you run or influence an institution designed to dominate people, it will corrupt you. Take the kindest or most skeptical person, make them an absolute ruler, and six months down the line you have someone who's lost all their principles and all their values except power. Using force across an entire population, say by passing laws or collecting taxes, requires you to lie, because you always want your subjects to believe you're doing it for them. There's never a break in successful propaganda. Everything we do, we do it for you, poor people. Even today, when people are more skeptical, everyone is convinced the system exists for our benefit. It's just that we have the wrong people in power. No. The problem is, when you concentrate power, which is the entire purpose of the state, you necessarily take it away from others. If you pass a law saying you can't wear a mask to a protest, which has happened in Canada, parts of the US, and 
more recently in Hong Kong, unsurprisingly, you've crossed off one more freedom the people used to have, and empowered the police with one more reason to hurt and cage people. So you have to lie about your policies, and you have to implement them fully so you don't look inconsistent or weak, which means you threaten people with violence for exercising their freedom. And then you have to go to sleep at night. The more this kind of action becomes normal for a person, the easier they sleep at night. Look at George W. Bush or Barack Obama. Their policies have killed hundreds of thousands of innocent people, and there's no way they don't know that. And yet, they're still in the news, still smiling, still attracting praise and admiration, and still making money. Lying, forcing people, hurting, killing, caging, deporting, bombing, and explaining it all away. This is how you govern. Every time someone authorizes or commits one of those actions, they care a little less about principles, less about freedom and justice, less about the people they rule. They care about keeping their power. At first, at least, they care about keeping their consciences under control. But soon, they don't have to listen to their consciences anymore. And they become irresponsible, as power lets them evade responsibility for their actions. And they get entitled, as power enables them to live off the labor of others. Saint Bonaventura, a 13th century theologian, once said something like, The higher a monkey climbs, the more you see of its ass. In other words, the more power someone amasses, the further they are from social constraints. People want power because it creates, or seems to create, freedom of action, safety, personal safety, and control of others. But it usually doesn't bring those things, really. It often brings vanity, anxiety regarding how tight their grip on power is and how long it'll last, delusions of grandeur, delusions of how benign the holder of power is, and the desire to use that power to gain even more. We should tear down social hierarchies, of course, for the poor and disenfranchised, but even for the powerful. Everyone is a victim of power imbalances. Now, I'm not a psychiatrist, so I can't speak for any individuals. But antisocial personality disorder, or psychopathy, is much more common at the top, among the rich and powerful than in the general population. There, this, I would say, is evidence either of power corrupting or that this kind of personality type is attracted to power, or my guess is both. Either way, if you start down a path of having to lie, cheat, steal, and hurt people, your good intentions get corrupted and all your harmful actions get excused. The more you do those things, the easier they get. What it all means for us is we can't use appeals to conscience to influence the people in power. I don't really get why people engage in non-violence and even want to be arrested in an effort to change how powerful people think. It doesn't work that way. Their consciences are muted. You have to force them, which, after all, is just self-defense in the class war they wage on us every day. So when people with power pretend to represent the rest of us, we don't even have to know what they propose to know it's bullshit. People who want freedom and justice have incompatible interests with the people in power. Your politician or party is not an exception. 
That's why I think it's silly to give people a legal road to power. No one should have power, least of all someone who wants it. They will lie, cheat, steal, backstab, and even kill to maintain their wealth and their power. And if you won't do those things, you as an individual won't become or stay powerful. You don't rule with sympathy and kindness. In fact, those things are the first to go. There's collective power, power in numbers, where everyone is empowered to do what they want to do. But that power is necessarily decentralized. That's the ideal we should be working towards. But it's not a matter of showing powerful people reason and persuading them to shrink the state or give away their private fortunes. They'll never do that without a fight. And that's probably the last, most tragic effect of power. You're unwilling to relinquish one iota of it, and you feel like shit if you do. Power is like a drug that way. You always want more. It's impossible to ever be satisfied. So we should take their power away, right? Not so fast. When the ruling elite feel threatened, they tend to channel wealth and influence into propaganda or right-wing social movements. They know solidarity is collective power and a, a great counterbalance to their concentrated power. So they want to break that power and divide us into competing sects, maybe by class, ideology, religion, gender, and of course, race. Recently, the quite powerful Larry Summers made a statement to the effect that if you had taxed Henry Ford a bit more, he, Ford, being a total anti-Semite, would inevitably have funneled more money into Jew-hating propaganda. In other words, if you try to touch their pile, the rich will create a whole new generation of neo-Nazis. Neo-Nazis tend to love power and violence, so they're the perfect foot soldiers for the rich. And indeed, rich people are spending lots of money to support various right-wing groups, including neo-Nazis. See the description for some links. Fortunately, the past decade or so has also seen a surge of civil society defending itself from fascism. We'll need to stay united and armed and eventually, we'll need to fight their sponsors. In so-called civilized society, we've long since been indoctrinated to believe hierarchy is necessary to accomplish most social goals, including security from invasion, and that it's inevitable, so learn to live with it. It isn't. It's not necessary for us to obey people just because they claim authority over us. It's not necessary to follow someone else's orders to defend ourselves. It's not necessary to have rich and powerful people in a society. In fact, their presence is a sign of the failure of civil society to defend itself against parasites. Many societies throughout history have had no hierarchy. It's just been normal for us to bow down to masters for a few thousand years now, so we take it for granted. The ideal is for power to be decentralized and evenly distributed, so everyone is equally empowered to enforce norms and social rules, and yet equally respectful of everyone else's freedom. Hierarchy is not inevitable. It's not necessary. It destroys freedom and justice. It corrupts people. It turns people into liars, thieves, traitors, and murderers. We should sweep away all structures of power for everyone's sake.